Hello everyone, and welcome to the first video of math topics for this 2025. Happy New Year! This video is about the power of expressions in mathematics. Um, the podcast that we um, have been uh, working on about calculus prerequisites or pre-calculus. <clears throat> it's important that you understand the power of expressions in mathematics because um, the power of those expressions will create uh, important connections in more sophisticated and complex topics. Um, for example, I have the following expression and I want to write it down here 1 over x this is a very powerful expression in mathematics and you can analyze that that expression from different perspectives from the arithmetic pers perspective from the algebra perspective from the geometrical representation but <clears throat> I would like to say something that is uh, uh, true in terms of mathematics, but it's important that you understand that 1 over x is 0. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, no, why 1 over x is can be 0? It's impossible. It's 1 divided by 2 by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, never will be 0. Yes, never will be 0. <clears throat> but it's approaching, it's approaching to 0. I don't want to put the 1 over x right there for you equals 0. But I want that you understand that 1 over x is something that is con continuously approaching to 0 continuously approaching to zero. If that x value that is independent, you decide to pick, I don't know, uh, a very big value for x, positive or negative, the answer, the answer will be approaching more and more to zero. And this is the power of expressions in, in mathematics. So, so you can use a calculator right here. And I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to divide 1 by x, but that x will be 1, I don't know, a lot of zeros right there. And you will see that is a number. That is impressively closer to zero. Impressively closing to zero. So the exponent is negative, so you're going to have something like 0, 0. 0.000 closing to zero. But let's 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 do it more simple. Let's compare over 10. Let's compare over 100. Let's compare <clears throat> over 1,000. Let's compare over a million. The number is getting closer and closer to zero. But if you do it with negative numbers, <clears throat> and you divide by 1,000, negative okay is it still closing to zero this is the power of one expression in mathematics and it's and when you teach math <clears throat> and this is the podcast for how do i teach math how do i learn math this is the way i teach math because that's the way i would like to learn math that when I first see as a student 1 over x, I want to see 
got somebody telling me, this is zero. But how? How can one over x be zero? And, and this is the opportunity, the teaching opportunity to go over the calculator along with the student and say, let's do this. Let's pick random values for x. Random values for x. And you will see the approximation to zero. And don't forget that. You can say that in, in elementary school. And you can say that in middle school. Before talking about functions. Before talking about <clears throat> y equal x, y equals 1 over x, which is a function, before going to the to the pers uh, geometrical perspective of 1 over x. This is critical. And then you, you work with equivalences. So what is equivalent to, to 1 over x? Okay, equivalent to 1 over x, let me put it over here, <clears throat> is something like x to the negative 1. And you start manipulating the expression. You start manipulating the expression. Because there is a, a, a property of exponent that everyone should know. Right there. That allow me to move up and down the power. And then is when you say, okay, <coughs> A negative exponent. What is the difference between a negative exponent and a positive exponent? So what is, what is the difference between a positive exponent and a negative exponent? A positive exponent is, is a repeated multiplication. I haven't said here that it's x times x times x yet. I haven't said that is uh, another way to multiply it by itself. I just said that it's a repeated multiplication of x. How many times? Three times. And then you can move from here to here and say, now my exponent is negative. What is the meaning of my exponent negative? If my exponent positive is a repeated multipl multiplication, my exponent negative will be a repeated division. And this is and you're returning to 1 over x. <laughs> and then you can ask the student, hey, create more repeated divisions. And they can say, oh yeah, I can put more repeated division. But what will be the more repeated division here? To the negative 2. And to the negative 100. Which is important the power of expressions. And this is one of the reasons the students, when they face pre-calculus, algebra 2, function behavior, limit in calculus, they start struggling. And they say, no, 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 no. I'm not good at math, so... No, you're, you're, you're good at math. You are good. You have to believe in that, that you are good at math. The problem is that your frustration is coming from something that is not your fault. I don't want to blame the teachers, but I want to blame the opportunities, the teaching opportunities that we teachers or we learners or we wants to teach someone our members of the family members that wants to learn math or, or you have the opportunity to, to explain math you you must have to say this you must nurture the students creativity playing with the numbers without doing any question I'm not doing any question I'm just talking about 1 over x This is really important. Of course, if you get to uh, 
you want to move that expression to to functions and and graphing representation of course of course you can go here to decimals okay and you can and you can type here y equals one over x and this is this is the uh, the the final or the powerful visualization of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that is getting closer to zero. And you can see here, it's getting closer to zero. Look, look, as soon as the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, this line or this curve is not a line. Red is approaching to, to uh, y equals zero, which is the, the x-axis from the right from the right and if, if if you're getting numbers really 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 small you are approaching to the x-axis too so you're approaching to y equals zero and now that combination of the graphing perspective of the geometrical idea or the visualization of one expression is one over x. This is another way to see one over x. They can understand this approximation and they can under start understanding limit of functions. Mm -hmm. And limit to infinity, because if I said if the x is infinity, what would be the answer? <laughs> if the x is infinity, what will be the answer? Infinity is a super, super uh, big number. Let's say that. Let's say that to a sixth grader after this conversation. The sixth grader is going to say, okay, this is getting, 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 let me use the approximation, is getting closer to zero. Because I saw it in a calculator, I practice it in a calculator, I prove it in a calculator, and then I went to a graphing ca calculators and it showed me the same idea. And this is what I call connections in mathematics. Connections, yes, connections. So now, every time that the student face that situation, they, they understand they are working with zero. Equivalent to zero, equivalent to zero, approximately zero. And you're going to make the student's life easier, easier. And their perspective of the mathematics easier. And you are encouraging students to learn mathematics from a positive perspective, from a positive motivation. Now, in future, structures like the limit when the x is approaching to infinity of 1 over x, they can answer the question without hesitation. And you only have to say that this is a notation for approximation if you want to teach that to a fifth grader or a sixth grader. What is that L I M? No, no, this is approximately. So I'm asking you, what is the approximation of one over x when x is infinity? We're getting approaching to infinity. The students will be able to answer the question. They will understand that the answer is zero. Of course, then it comes algebra and the algebra manipulation of that expression. Mm -hmm. If I put here, I don't know, 3 over x, and I change the 1, and then you, you say, there is another way to write 3 over x. I can do, this is 3 over 1 times 1 over x. Mm -hmm. And then again, they can see the one where X. 
this is really powerful and I don't want to extend the video more this is the first video of the 2025 but I want to hear from you if you know any other powerful expression that is super connected with the rest of the courses in mathematics high school courses and calculus for example we have the responsibility to teach this way no because we are not teaching calculus we are not going to talk about calculus ideas infinity approaching getting closer move the student from the idea of equal equation to the idea of approximation this is all about calculus the approximation the analysis of the approximation which is the analysis of the behavior i hope you liked the video uh, give us a like share support math topics and don't forget to join math topics membership we have presentations we have practices questions and answers thank you so much this is the first video of 2025 happy new year i wish you all the best thank you <laughs>